most of the times we will be reading our images from files. We will not be creating our images from scratch, but let's do it once because it will help us think about our images as uh, matrices, which will be very convenient when we want to manipulate them. Okay, so we start with some necessary import as usual. Basically, we have matplotlib to show things prettily, prettily in this notebook. NumPy, which is a very good way to manipulate lists of numbers and because matrices are lists of lists of numbers, they also count. And using NumPy will help us manage our images in a very efficient way in terms of uh, computation time. And for the first time, we import CV2 which is computer, uh, the, uh, the OpenCV library, okay? Um, this will be the library that we will be using the most for image manipulation. There are others, but this is the one that um, fits our needs best. So it's not necessarily better than others, the one that we are more used to and hope that you will get used to it too. First of all, let's just simply create an image with 400 times 400 pixels. All the images are two dimensional in this case. All the images that we are going to be using now and the images that we are most used to seeing. We could also work with 3D images, but that would be a whole different animal. So we'll not be doing it, just know that it exists. But in this course, we will be dealing with regular uh, 2D images. And we will create one with 400 pixels in the X axis and 400 pixels in the Y axis. And to do that, basically we will use the NP zeros function. So NP zeros creates a list of zeros and we tell it what type all the data needs to have. And we are using eight bit integers in this case. And we also need to give NumPy a um, size parameter. NumPy is prepared to work with matrices of very different dimensions and matrices within matrices and so on. And in this case, we are defining our matrix that we will interpret as an image of size 400 times 400 times three. Take a moment to consider why the three. And the answer comes from also is indicated in the name of the variable, my color image. So I'm using at this moment NumPy to initialize a matrix that will have a grid of 400 times 400 pixels. And in each pixel, I'm going to have three values. So this is the two dimensions that give me the grid, the shape of the grid. And the third dimension this number three in this case is giving me the fact that I'm going to have three values in each pixel. And let's define it and let's just access because this is a matrix and I can access it by using square brackets and then the two coordinates that I want to see. Let's see one pixel there. And because I have used NP zeros, I have zero, zero, zero. The three values that I have in pixel zero, zero are also zero, 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 okay? And now we can use imshow from matplotlib to plot the matrix. And because we are plotting it, we are interpreting as it as an image that we have just created. Okay, and unsurprisingly, it's very black, all full of black pixels. Okay, so with this very simple definition, we have created a matrix that we can interpret as a image. In this case, everything is black, not very interesting, a little bit boring. Okay, so let's just add some color to it. And let's also, sorry, uh, first let's uh, see that we can do this definition this way. And that if we wanted to define a binary image, we could binary or grayscale image in this case, we could do it just by changing the three for a one. Okay, and if we do that, instead of getting three elements in each pixel, we get one. Okay, so this is a simple way to define 
I'm calling it binary because I'm only putting zeros in it, but uh, because I'm using integers here, uh, we could also interpret it as a grayscale matrix. Okay. As I was saying, let's add some color to our color image. Let's define it again using this 400 times 400 times 3 size. Let's fill it with zeros like we have been doing. Okay, and now let's use some pre-programmed functions from OpenCV to do something, for example, like drawing an ellipse in it. Okay. So to draw an ellipse, we need to give uh, OpenCV a series of parameters. So the angle of the ellipse, the major axis, the minor axis, the color, the thickness of the line. You can Google and check these uh, functions if you want to. They have lots of parameters. They are OpenCV drawing functions. Okay and we can use it to just draw, in this case, a red ellipse in our image. I have given my color image to it and I have added with this ellipse function, this have painted the proper pixel in red. I can also use other functions like the rectangle function to add a, a rectangle to, in this case, I'm adding it to the binary image too, okay? And I'm using plots to just show things uh, prettily. Sorry, I didn't run the one before. Um, sorry, I seem to have a version problem in this code. Um, basically, I was trying to draw a binary rectangle in a binary image and OpenCV, this version of OpenCV is complaining, so I need to change it so that the image is also RGB. Um, this is a, an interesting example that um, code in Python and in OpenCV in particular changes quite a lot and we have to be very current of what we are doing and of the functions that we are using. Um, I'm going to leave it like that so that um, students also encounter it. Basically we need to to be very current in the things that we are doing and OpenCV and computer vision and deep learning also is a super dynamic field so this code that used to work a um, couple of months ago doesn't work anymore because the function the rectangle function now apparently needs a 3d function and there's probably a way to fix it Th th there is surely a way to fix it but as this is not super important, what we wanted to see here was that we can create images and we can just paint some of the points of the images in color. I'm going to leave it at that for the moment. Okay. What we are going to be doing most of the time is not creating images from scratch, but reading them from files. Okay. So let's do just that. In my... Um, In my hard drive, I have a file that I'm going to show here. See, I have opened it with uh, one um, image visualization software. Okay. And I, I have it in my hard drive. Using OpenCV, I can read it from my hard drive. In this case, because I haven't given it any path, it's in the same folder as I have my Jupyter notebook. Okay. If you use uh, this call-up version, you will have to download this into the remote uh, call-up machine first thing, in the, in the first cell of the call-up notebook, okay? Um, let's see what we have when we use this imread and we tell it that we are reading something. We tell OpenCV that we are reading something that is grayscale. Basically, we can print one of the pixels, for example, let's access uh, coordinate zero, zero of image. And because this is a matrix in the UMAT class of OpenCV, we need to access it as we would any double list. So see that in the previous matrix class, 
we use this notation so we had a comma between the coordinates in this case we need to say first we go to list 0 and then in when we are in this 0 we open element 0 so we need double square brackets in this case we can print pixel 0 0 which will be here and then we can print another one like for example 30 and 20 which will be around here and will be white okay and we can show the image using imshow so as you can see the first pixel is 0 the second one is 255 i had of course prepared that beforehand and by using imshow we can see this grayscale image you may be thinking okay that's not very grayscale everything is black and white yes it's actually a binary image but i'm choosing to represent it as a grayscale image because it's more general um we can go a little bit deeper into how these matrix matrices uh, represent and relate to our images for example let's just make a small cut in our image we are going to define a start point an end point okay and i have again prepared beforehand that the start point is going to be pixel 1818 and the end point is going to be pixel 3030 then i'm going to use a particular thickness and i'm going to do two things first what we are seeing here is that i'm using the rectangle method that i used before to um draw a uh, gray 125 value rectangle in over my grayscale binary image okay and i'm going to show it and i'm showing it here so with this i can see where this rectangle is the rectangle that has one so top left vertex in, vertex in 1818 and bottom right vertex vertex in 3030 okay not only that i can now look at my image as a matrix and i can because a matrix is a list of lists i can slice it so i'm going to only consider the values for both lists between 18 and 30 which is the same thing that i'm doing here but I'm doing it as a matrix okay so now in sub image I'm going to have the part of the image that corresponds to this and I have done it using list slicing okay and if you don't know what list slicing is you have a very nice course where you can go and learn everything about algorithms and data structure okay so we have drawn this very conveniently and we have al also created this sub image and we can now look a little bit at it so we have the sub image here and we can display it and our sub image has some 125 values which correspond to the grayscale some zero values which correspond to this small black part here and don't worry we will see this bigger in a second and lots of 255 white values that we can see here okay and let's just picture it too we picture it using again imshow from matplotlib okay so here we have the gray values in the border of our sub image the black values that are outside of these circles the background of the original image and the white values that correspond to the top part of this circle that we are imaging here okay so with this we have seen how to slightly create images from scratch with some problems that technical difficulties are part of programming and we have also seen how to load images using load images that we have in files using see OpenCV's inbreed function and we have manipulated them a little bit we have painted a nice uh, gray rectangle in a binary image and we have seen how we can use lizard slicing to select a part of that image so we have a small sub image that we can then picture here
there is not a lot left to do in this session but we still will have a look at a couple of um, color images which are after all the ones that we will be using the most in our drone image processing endeavors <laughs> 